Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. Welcome to the New Look HSPIP tutorial using the 5.4th edition. In this video, we're looking at the basics of what Hansen solubility parameters actually are. And we start with the default set, which appears when you first run HSPIP. We have a set of solvents. Why we have these solvents, that's a different question. We'll come to that later. But each solvent has a DD, dispersion, DP, polar, and DH value. And like everything in HSPAP, if we click on a header, we can sort by, for example, solvent name, or in this case, by DD. So we start with those rather boring solvents, which have relatively low DD values, ether, methanol, and hexane, are around 14 point whatever. And Although these are relatively small values, there's still quite a lot of DD because that's dispersion, that's van der Waals, that's polarizability, that's the electrons sloshing around outside the molecule, and everything is held together by DD. So hexane has nothing else holding it together except dispersion. If we have more exciting molecules, so I click again to sort from high to low, pyridine is an aromatic with lots of extra electrons plus the nitrogen alone pair, we got cresol, which is also aromatic, and then we have DMSO with that large sulfoxide group. Lots of polarizable electrons, a very high refractive index, and that relates to the DD value. So these are being held together by other forces as well, but the DD is holding them together very strongly. And let's look at hexane, which is 14.9, then cyclohexane, which is 16.8. The same number of carbon atoms, but because it's cyclic, there's more concentration of the van der Waals effect. And if we go down even further, if we go down to benzene, then we have six carbon atoms. It's 18.4 because we have a much higher level of polarizable electrons because it's aromatic. Then we have DP, which is the polar. No surprises here. Benzene, cyclohexane, and hexane have none of it. And at the other extreme, Acetonitrile, methyl carbon nitrogen in a straight line, a very high dipole moment, has a very high DP value. And something like THF is intermediate. And then we have hydrogen bonding, DH. Hexane has none of it. Benzene and toluene, the aromatics, have a small amount because aromatics are modest hydrogen bond acceptors. At the other extreme, of course, we have water, which is highly hydrogen bonding. Then we have methanol, which has more DH than ethanol, because the extra CH2 group in ethanol effectively dilutes the amount of hydrogen bonding. Then THF has a DH of 8, so it's fairly hydrogen bonding as an acceptor. And if we go down just slightly to acetonitrile, we see that although it is very polar, it's not very strongly hydrogen bonding. That nitrogen is a relatively weak hydrogen bond acceptor. Whereas ethanol, is very hydrogen bonding, but not actually very polar. It doesn't have a very high dipole moment. So we really do need DP and DH. So there we are, the basics of what Hansen solubility parameters mean. And there's a bonus with all this. Let's go to THF again. You will not know the HSP values of THF, but you can still make a plausible estimate on what you've learned already. So it's cyclic, so it's going to have a reasonably high DD. It's fairly polar, so it's going to have a reasonable DP value. You might think it might be 9, or you might think it might be 3, but 5.7, there's no surprise. And then that ether oxygen is a hydrogen bond acceptor, so you might think it might be 5, or it might be 10, but you still have the right sense of what these values should be. So HSP are precise, but they're also intuitive. So we as chemists can understand what they mean. 